On for our third question. I'd like you to name two ways that the city can use arts and cultural activities to bring our diverse communities together. Council Moore. The idea of using the arts is to bring folks together is a real passion of, of mine. And that's why in 2007, before I ever took office, I had this vision of creating a cultural festival that would be based on and would bring people of all different cultures together. I think a lot of times, we have a lot of different cultures in the city and a lot of cultures within their own communities uh, hold various festivals that the rest of the city is really unaware of. And it's wonderful to, to celebrate within your own community, but I really think it's important to use our multiculturalism to showcase and, have, and share it with other communities. So I started something called EPIC, Earth People and International Culture. It was my idea, and I didn't know if it would really fly. I didn't know if different groups would actually embrace it and keep it going, but I'm really happy to say that I'm no longer running it. I don't have time. It still goes on in my community. And different, different cultural groups come together and uh, share culture, share dance, um, and share those things with each other in this festival. I hope, I hope that, it will, that it will grow over time. But I think one way we can, one way the city can support is to, is to really support these organic kinds of cultural activities that go on across the city. Council Member DeWin is right, Vice Member DeWin's right about embracing the Asian community and, and all the different types of community and cultural activities that we find throughout the city. <clears throat> we must do that. I think if we're going to keep increasing our audience and participation in cultural arts, we need to embrace new cultural versions of it as well as, as young people. Because the younger generations uh, tend to approach things a little bit differently. They want to have the social media um, aspect to it. Um, they want it to be fun and entertaining, and so we need to reach out and do things in, in different ways uh, to really reach out to our, our cultural communities and, and have them become involved. Can you name two ways the city can use arts and cultural activities to bring diverse communities together? Tell them to come, out, come on down and paint City Hall. I'm sure you're going to get all kinds of people wanting to paint our City Hall into a more vibrant and more colorful City Hall. Um, I think that if we have, if we continue to have festivals, ethnic, uh, cultural celebrations, we need to consider providing free parking. That is the one impediment that is stopping people from coming to downtown and participating in all these cultural, um, ethnic festivals. I remember when we used to have the, uh, the Vietnamese New Year Parade here in downtown San Jose, and we attract hundreds and thousands of people, not just residents from San Jose, but people throughout the Bay Area, and people from Southern California, Vietnamese Americans from Southern California, to come up to San Jose to participate in the Tenth Parade. And again, they eat, they, they stay here, they occupy our hotels. It's just a great way to generate economic, um, you know, by financial uh, for our city. And so we continue to do that. I think we have such a vibrant downtown, a vibrant atmosphere where people feel like they can just walk, and have free parking, and just have a great time. Art is all about having fun and having a great time. And I just feel that we don't have that. We're lacking that right now. We have such incredible arts and cultural facilities, incredible festivals here, like the C2, um, uh, SV, the uh, Creative Convergence, uh, Silicon Valley here for the first time last year. And we brought in so many different people from all um, walks of life. We got young people, we got the techies, we got intellectuals, and yet people are always complaining that they don't have enough parking and it's too expensive to park. So as a city, let's just forget for once that, you know, we're not, we're not gonna generate revenue from parking, whatever that may be, thirty, forty thousand dollars but the money that we're gonna generate when people spend and stay here is going to quadruple that or even 10 times fold. So that's what I want to consider doing as mayor. Thank you. I certainly believe that, uh, as mentioned prior from other folks, that uh, festivals, both with music and food, uh, makes everyone happy and brings people together to higher appreciation. Uh, certainly uh, the idea of allowing uh, yeah, free parking is also another incentive. Uh, but I also think people need to feel safe when they're downtown. And unfortunately, you know, Original Joe's now is closing earlier because of the, some nefarious activities going on. And this is a restaurant that I used to dine in until one in the morning all the time. 
So I think we want to make sure that everyone, when they come down here, feels safe and secure. And uh, I think that's a, a major component. Uh, another uh, I thing I think that would bring uh, to your point is um, the Silicon Valley Gay Men's Chorus. They do an outstanding job in, in, perform, in their performing arts of, of singing. And I think uh, more exposure for the LGBT community. Uh, we have a great theater in San Francisco called Theater Rhinoceros. Uh, and getting them to come down and do some performances here. Uh, but I think more exposure, I know we always sometimes do multicultural and thinking of purely ethnicity by uh, historical background of another born, born in another country or heritage country, but I think also being awareness of the LGBT community and, and being open uh, to having more performances. You know, right now I go see them at the church. Uh, there are clearly other venues available in the city where they could perform and have a larger audience. So I just want to make sure that uh, uh, we're including the whole, everyone when we're talking multicultural. Well, multiculturalism has been a big part of, of my work over the last many years in public office. And uh, the year that I was running for city council, uh, I went out and visited something called Day in the Park, which is uh, at Lake Cunningham Park at the time. And my predecessor on the city council had built that as a resource fair and advertised it throughout that community of 90,000 people. And I showed up uh, expecting to shake a lot of hands and try to get a lot of votes. And there were about 150 people uh, mingling around a, a park that would hold thousands. And so when I was uh, elected to office, my staff asked me, do you want to continue this or not? Is it really worth it? And I said, I want to continue it. If we could bring people in from every culture, every tradition, every neighborhood, bring down barriers between people, make them feel comfortable here, and have fun. And it can't be 150 people. The next year, we got it up to 3,000. When I left office, it was up to 7,000. It was one of the most beautiful tapestries of people that you'd ever see. Uh, we fill up stages uh, with youth, with high school kids, multicultural entertainment, and so on. I know in District 8 uh, that tradition continues. I became a county supervisor, and we launched a similar effort at the new Alviso Marina. Last year, per a sheriff's survey of the population and the census, there were 12,000 people doing the same thing from all over the county. Um, it's a wonderful way to bring multicultural communities together. I think this should be a city of festivals. It should be a city of festivals. We have 300 days of sunshine, but we need to reduce fees, we need to reduce barriers, and make it easier for people uh, to do that. And then lastly, what I'll do as mayor of San Jose is I'll keep that rotunda full of multicultural activities, arts groups, and entertainment 365 days a year. I argued for that when I was on the council. There's no reason to have fees and barriers and restrictions keeping people out of that rotunda. It's the people's rotunda, and that's what we can use it for. Thank you. You know, I think one of the most extraordinary programs that happens in the city happens uh, because of the leadership of Andrew Bales. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Art Spark, you should get to know it. It's an incredible program. It gets thousands of kids. How many thousands of kids uh, this year? Well, we've got 63,000 so far. That's not bad. 63,000 kids who have had their first experience of artistic performance, uh, artistic engagement in some way, public schools throughout the city. Uh, that is a great thing. Let's make it available for every public school in the city. Let's ensure that every child, no matter what economic background, whatever uh, hurdle might exist in their way, that they have an opportunity to see dance, uh, to experience uh, a play, to be able to learn about this other dimension of life that so many are deprived of. Uh, I think also as we look around us, I think we could take a page from Kina Morrill who launched that wonderful Art Box project starting uh, in, uh, in downtown and in, in District 6, and I was uh, happy to be supportive of her in her launching. Uh, and now, of course, we see park boxes throughout the city. Well, we've got a lot of muralists. Uh, we certainly have a few quote-unquote graffiti artists. <laughs> and so we also have some taggers. And it seems to me that uh, we've got a lot of blank walls in this city. And I'd love to see an initiative citywide where we start and identify two dozen blank walls. And let's get murals up throughout the city. You know, how do we what do we really love about the great cities that we experience? What we love is what we experience on foot, looking around us, uh, being inspired. Uh, something that captures our imagination, something that 
provokes dialogue. You know, you may not like Captain Fallon, you may not like Quetzalcoatl, but they provoke dialogue, right? <laughs> we could use more of that in the city.